And welcome back to the show. You're on CentralCoastRadio.com. Well, there is a brand new sci-fi thriller that has just been released on streaming platforms called Dome House 6. That is well worth a look if you love intriguing sci-fi. And we thought today we would actually get the writer-director of the film on the phone to chat a little bit about it. Welcome to the program, Steve Osborne. Thank you, Dave, very much for having me. I'm excited to talk about it. No worries. Now, mate, this is an absolutely brilliant film. I've had a chance to sit down and watch it, and I loved it. So, congratulations. But tell us, where did the idea for this film first come from? Oh, first of all, I appreciate that. Thank you so much. I'm glad that people are actually enjoying the film. It, it always means a lot to me. So, um, yeah, the idea... Um, Basically, it's just really it's about relationships and and putting different personalities of people into a room and forcing them to stay in this particular house. Uh, that's where the sci-fi kind of element comes into it by having you know very harsh, uninhabitable environment in the background is forcing these you know seemingly unconnected people to to live together. And I think that's where the idea come from. It's just. Um, hey, let's put four odd people in a house together and, and see what happens. There's also a fair bit of a, a commentary there as well on um, certain relationships, especially between Micah and Sydney. Um, was that something that you wanted to explore with this film as well? Yeah, definitely. I think it's kind of uh, interesting to see how, you know, seemingly up front their relationship you know, may have looked pretty normal or enjoyable, you know, uh, but really what's happening in the background and behind closed doors is it's a completely different picture. So I think uh, that was a theme I wanted to explore there. So, mate, tell us a little bit about the writing process for this one. Um, how long did it take for you to write this screenplay, and did you find it was a an easy one to write or a difficult one to write? The process with the screenwriting is interesting. Uh, it varies from script to script. This one was pretty much achieved in a, in probably just under a month, I think. Um, but that's locked away entirely for the whole period of time. Uh, so it was a quick script to turn out. So inspiration, the whole script just really like flew. That's why I kind of took time off work to really focus on it and to not be distracted by anything else. So it was a fun script to write, and it happened very quickly. Now, there's a lot of young screenwriters out there that listen to this show. Is it difficult to get into that discipline to be able to do that? Because I know a lot of writers out there who have ideas, but they procrastinate a lot. Is it difficult to get into that kind of structure where you're you're saying, right, I'm taking time off work and this is what I've got to achieve at the end of that? It's definitely difficult. Uh, I always struggle myself too. Um, this is probably my ninth screenplay that I've, I've written and feature length. Uh, the process varies, but I think, yeah, having that discipline, just trying to lock yourself away from distractions is the main thing. And I think it's important to force something on paper, whether it's good or bad, it doesn't matter because it gets redrafted and redrafted. But not having anything on paper, you can't progress. So I think the important thing is, is just to get something down uh, Give up on the self doubt. Like, don't you know, talk yourself out of it, and believe that you know it is going to be salvageable, and there will be some magic in it. So that's my process: is just eliminating the distractions of the outside world, and then forcing myself to get something on pen and paper, and then of course the redraft stage. Yeah. Now, when you watch this film, one of the things that stands out is the performances of the cast. Did you kind of have people in mind? when you were writing this, of who would play different characters? I had definitely a few people in mind. Uh, we still went through an audition process, reaching out to people that I thought would be right for the role. And I think, though, what's interesting with them is, like, Jordan Abbey Young, who plays Harvey, and, and Prem Sagar, who plays uh, Micah. They're quite experienced. They've done some stuff before. But with Madeline Ray, who plays Sydney, the lead, and Gabrielle Brown, who plays Red, they were uh, just finishing their degrees um, in acting, like their film diplomas. So they were quite fresh to it all. So I think what was really good with it was having the kind of people more experienced with the less experienced, how they bounced off each other and learned from each other. And I think that made the, all, the performances very organic. 
So, there's some pretty intense scenes in this uh, film. Um, as a director, what was it like to direct those scenes? And also, what was that process like working with the actors, both before and after those scenes? Yeah, very good question. I think it's all about being upfront, having the project, having the script, knowing what you have to get out of the performers. There's no point, you know, bluffing over it or, or, or making it seem less intense than what it is. So just being honest and very upfront with the subject and the scenes and also explain to them how you are going to achieve it and going through that process with them and not changing it on the fly or on the day, really committing to those steps um, to ensure that everyone's comfortable. Uh, having a close set, of course, too, really helped. Uh, you know, just having the absolute essential people that had to be in there. And then I think being honest up front, the actors were honest with me with they felt uncomfortable, they all felt comfortable, and I could believe that they were. So I think, yeah, honesty is really, and just explaining it from the very get-go, uh, how you picture it, how you want to do it, and how you're going to achieve it. And um, I think that's how we were able to do it and have a comfortable set. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about the shoot itself. How long did you have to to shoot the film, and did you find it to be... Uh, an easy shoot or did you have some difficulties along the way? Yes, unbelievably. We shot the majority of the film because uh, most of it set place in the house uh, in about nine days. Uh, so, you know, I think it was a 90 page screenplay. So we we're shooting about nine pages a day on average, which was very ambitious and very challenging. And then on top of that, the house was very open plan and, basically had no walls on one side of the house. So we experienced a very wet weather during shooting, which delayed us a lot, but we had to kind of push through the rain and incorporate it into the story, um, which you'll see kind of how we did that. But we, we had to just embrace it and incorporate it into the story to make it work because we couldn't afford to not shoot the day because it was raining. Yeah. So, yeah, so it's very ambitious to shoot in nine days and then, the dust storm stuff at the start that's peppered throughout. We did uh, at a different location and a different time frame, but I think we spent maybe three days doing that. So essentially we did, you know, 14, 15 day shoot. I think it ended up being in the end. Awesome. So the film screened at the Sydney science fiction film festival as well. How did you find that experience with the film at the festival? It was incredible. Uh, Sydney science fiction film, Festival also premiered my first feature film, which was also a sci-fi. Uh, so, you know, the Simon Foster there and, and the people who run that are incredible and very sci-fi driven. So they really embrace it and, and help promote it and give us a good audience. Um, and the other people were Gold Coast Film Festival had the world premiere of it uh, in Queensland. So we're fortunate to have nearly a packed out theatre for that too. And Matt and Ray picked up... Um a nomination for Best Actress at the Sydney Science Fiction Film Festival as well. Like you said, she's a an inexperienced actress going into this film. That must have meant a lot to, to both you and her to see her get that nomination at the festival. 100%. And, that, and as you can see watching the film, it's well-deserved. Yep. She gave it all. You know, she would show up super prepared. She knew her lines for the day, you know, down packed which made my life easier as a director because, you know, learning the lines is half the battle. And then when they know it so effortlessly, then you're able to really work on performance. And I think that that's why she was nominated and, and deserving of it because her performance came through. How so, do you, yes. Yeah. How do you feel now that the film's heading out for a wider audience on streaming platforms? Are you excited? Are you nervous? How are you feeling? very excited i mean this is my first film to secure distribution and certainly my second film of may uh, so having this experience it's all fun like talking to fun people like yourself and other interviews and then of course seeing the content out there on the socials and knowing that other people you know might enjoy it and if not um you know at least they've watched it and Maybe people enjoy the performances and maybe not the story or maybe they enjoy the cinematography, but that's a, you know, collaboration and that means everyone on my team get kind of their work out there. So that's always very exciting. 
Steve, talking of teamwork, you have done a lot of work on different productions um, in Australia over the years. What are you working on now that our listeners can look forward to, to seeing in the future? Yeah, so in the industry, I do a lot of location scouting and on-set locations. So at the moment, I'm working on a TV series titled Apples Never Fall as a location scout and on-setter. Um, starring Annette Benning and Sam Neill. So that will be coming out later next year, I'm assuming. Yeah. And what about for your own work? Are you in the middle of another screenplay now? Have you got another film planned? Absolutely. So we've just been greenlit as of this week. For my third feature film, uh, we start development today onwards, pre-production, and we're looking to shoot in January uh, in Queensland again. Uh, with a bigger budget, which is nice because we did the first two on, you know, micro budgets essentially. And now we've got a bit of cash to flow with, play with, and looking forward to making something bigger and better. Awesome. So for all of our listeners out there, if you want to watch Dome House 6, you'll be able to watch it on Google Play and YouTube movies. And I believe it's on physical media as well. Uh, Steve, tell us a little bit about the physical media side. Where can people grab a copy of Dome House 6? Yes, Stonehouse 6 is available on Blu-ray and DVD, which is fantastic, available at Amazon.com and various other stores. Like in the US, we've got Walmart release, uh, we've got a Barnes & Noble release, Best Buy release uh, in the physical media. So I guess to finish off, what would you like to say to everybody out there before they sit down to watch Stonehouse 6? Uh, yeah, well, thank you very much for considering watching, let alone watching it. I really appreciate it, and I know our cast and crew will. And at the end of the day, we just hope you enjoy it. And if you're a budding filmmaker, hopefully you take some um, inspiration from it too. So, And we look forward to watching your films.